All right, so I've been getting a fair number of requests on how to use pixel graph and doing a video tutorial, which I hate doing, but here we go anyway. So we're going to start by creating a new project here in pixel graph. And the first thing you need to do is tell it where you want to put your project. The key thing here is not picking an existing folder. Delete that. You want to create something new and empty. So call this our sample resource pack. All right, we've got our folder. I'm going to let it create the Minecraft folders for us, save a bit of time. We're going to stick with our raw format, which means each texture is going to be separate. And create a default profile, which we'll come back to. All right, so we've got our new empty project. First thing we need to do is add some textures. So we're going to leave pixel graph for a minute jump to our new project folder our default files in here and we're going to go to minecraft textures and our empty block folder all right so next to save us a little bit of time i'm going to take these handful of textures i've already thrown together so first thing i have here is our albedo mask which is the default minecraft bricks but upscaled to 64 and the bricks made a little bit bigger but other than that it's really just some red and gray. And next we got our height map, which is just something I threw together real quick using that same albedo mask and then applying two different noise layers, one with some high frequency noise for the grout and then another lower frequency noise, which I clipped the lower ends off. So we just kept the higher edges and made those as indents to the bricks, give it a little bit more shape. Pretty straightforward. All right, next we got a simple porosity mask, which we probably won't even look at. And this basically is just very absorbent in darkening in the grout and just a little bit in the bricks themselves. And last but not least, we got a smoothness layer, which is not at all smooth in the grout and a little bit on the bricks. It's probably a little too high for the bricks, but should be good enough for the sample. All right. So now that we've got a handful of our textures, and you may notice we're doing these separately. I'm not packing these into the lab format. Pixel Graph is going to do that for us. Um, some people don't like to work this way. In my opinion, it's much easier. All right, so the next key thing we need here, and this is really important, is for Pixel Graph to know that this is a material and a group of textures, we're going to need this empty text file called pbr.yaml. Oops, I also forgot a step. We're still in our block folder. We're going to group these together in a folder called bricks so that it knows what these are going to be named. All right, so in our block folder, we have our bricks material, with our empty text file here, and a handful of textures. So now we're going to jump back to Pixel Graph, refresh our folder list here. And we can see that we now have our bricks material. So, zoom in a bit. I'm going to turn on tiling just so we can get a better image of what this looks like repeated. So over here on our right, we've got our different layers. So our albedo is pretty much fine as is. We don't really have to do anything else with that. We're going to skip diffuse and come back to it later. Here's our alpha layer. So again, all the textures are separate and because we don't have an alpha texture and because we don't need transparency per pixel here, we're just going to set this whole channel to white. Moving on to our height, we can see our height map we did earlier. It's pretty extreme there for the palm, so I'm going to scale it down to 30%. Looks better. Eh, let's make it a little crazy. 40%, why not? All right. Next is our normal map. Now you may have remembered we didn't make one. So this is going to be automatically generated for us from our height map. And there's a few options you can set here. Um, our default is a simple Sobel 3 filter, which is what most things use. We also have this high and low pass, which lets you get those single pixel normals that a lot of people like for lower resolution packs. So with this high pass, we're only going to do the lower edges in the grout. And with this low pass, we're only going to do the higher edges of the bricks. 
Now, I guess for this example, let's try out the low pass and just do the brick edges with some normals. Another thing I like to do with textures like this, as you can see, it's pretty smooth. We're going to throw in some noise. So 2% is a pretty good bit. Just to give you an example, if you did 20%, it's pretty crazy. So yeah, let's do three, make them a good bit noisy, more visible. All right, moving on. Next, we have occlusion, which you may notice is empty. Now, Pixel Graph can generate this for you, but it's kind of slow, so it's disabled by default. But for now, we're going to see what the texture looks like without it and then come back to it. So next, we have specular, which we don't use. Our smoothness, a little too close. Roughness, we don't use. No metal. F-stop, very important. Um, so for this, I prefer 5% myself on materials like brick, but we're going to go with the standard 4%. And rather than make a texture, you can just set this value for the whole channel here, and Pixel Graph will handle that for you. So we'll go with 4%. We already have our porosity. We don't need subsurface or emissive. All right, so there's everything. And we are going to now do one more thing. So now that we have this material ready, we need to publish it so that we can view it in Minecraft. So I'm going to go to my publishing profiles, and we can see we've got this default one that we created when we started the pack, which defaults to Java, got this description, none of that's too important. You can also see the encoding, which right now we're tag targeting lab PBR, latest 1.3. We don't really need to mess with any of this right now, so we're just going to leave that as is. And then textures. So. Since we are working with 64 resolution images, I'm going to go ahead and set the block texture size here. And what that does is when Pixel Graph is making textures from those channel values we set, it knows what resolution to use. Let's see, we're not going to do any automatic resizing in this video. Uh, the normal generation, as you saw earlier, is automatically on. We're going to go ahead and enable the occlusion generation. Alright, and that's all the options. The next thing we're going to do for this example is we're going to duplicate this profile we have here and give it a better name. So this is going to be our sample RP lab PBR. And we're just going to delete that default. Alright, so another interesting thing I want to point out is the whole point of Pixel Graph, or at least one of the major points, is you can target multiple encodings. So we're going to duplicate this lab PBR, and now we're also going to support old PBR, because people like SOOF shaders. So, the only thing we need to do here is for our old PBR, we're going to change it to Legacy. And this is the old PBR, or as I call Legacy PBR format. So now we can target both. All right. Next thing we're going to do is come up here. We're going to publish our lab PBR profile. And if you haven't set these up by default, it's going to ask you where you want to publish it. But I've already set up my publishing location, so I'm going to tell it to my Fabric instance I have running. And it's done. 164 texture is pretty quick. So now we can hop over to Minecraft. And in our resource packs, we can see our sample RP. So I'm going to drop that in, let it load. And now we can see our brick texture. So because we did enable occlusion generation and just forgot to change the settings, we can't actually see the AO it generated here in the bricks. It's a little splotchy with the default settings. And oh my god, those cows are noisy. Shut up. All right, but we got our bricks. We got our palm, as we can see here pretty well with Chocopic PBR test. And we have in our shadows our ambient occlusion, and in our lighting our normals. And if you look really closely, you can see those darker edged pixels on the bottom right from our normals. 